Good morning everyone and could I extend a very warm welcome to you all to this our online service and also a very warm welcome to any visitors who may be tuning in. We do hope you will enjoy the service. With regard to intimations I have a couple to make this morning. Uh, one is from Anne Guy. 
Anne has asked me to indicate that the proposed closed show for the 2nd of November at the Orbison Community Centre has been cancelled due to the ongoing coronavirus crisis. Anne sends her apologies to you all and you will be notified in due course when an alternative date has been arranged. Uh, with regard to birthdays, I have one birthday to uh, mention today. Uh, my daughter, my younger daughter Gillian, it's her birthday on Monday, Monday the 19th. Gillian, we do hope you'll have a great birthday on Monday and uh, with congratulations and best wishes from everyone here at Belsall Central Church. We do hope you'll have a great day. Lastly, it's with an extremely sad heart that I have to announce the death of one of our members, Betty Mackey. Betty passed away on Friday night at Hairmeyer's Hospital after a short illness. Betty was a very popular member of our choir and indeed a very popular member of our church and she will be sadly missed. Our thoughts are with Jim, her husband, and Jane and Laura, her daughters. And I would ask you to remember them all in your prayers this morning. Thank you very much indeed for your attention. Give thanks to God. We, we thank, thank God for joy, for, for laughter, for abundant, abundant blessings of every kind. kind. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything. We, we thank, thank God when we can and as, as we can, for struggles, for solitude, for fears. fears. Give thanks to God at all times and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We, we thank, thank God that in Christ, Christ our, our joys as, as well as our pain, our losses as well as our laughter, are in God's heart and hands.
Prayer of Thanksgiving and Confession Heavenly Father, Lord of the Harvest, we thank you that you sustain your planet and your people with good things. We thank you that you give us food to keep us healthy and happy. We thank you particularly for potatoes, rice, meat, sausages, flour, eggs. Heavenly Father, Lord of the Harvest, thank you that you sustain your planet and your people with good things. We thank you that you give us food to keep us healthy and happy. We thank you for such abundance of delicious, life-giving food. Heavenly Father, Lord of the Harvest, we confess that we do not always know or even care where our food comes from. We confess that we do not always care for our neighbours or the planet as you taught us to. We confess that we do not always care for the welfare of those who produce our food as we ought to. Help us take small steps in changing how we shop for our food. Help us to see that how we shop is still part of our worship of you. Help us to worship you with our life choices. Amen. Now we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be my name. My kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy, For thy is my kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Welcome to our harvest service. It is a wonderful privilege to be able to celebrate the gift of the harvest. It is a feast that goes back many centuries in very different ways in its so-called modern form. It goes back to the year 1843 when a minister invited his parishioners to simply give thanks to God for the harvest. But it's been there right throughout the celebration of the church because it is something so instinctive to us as human beings to give thanks and praise to God for for food and for sustenance, for life and for delight. And so in this particular act of worship, there'll be a variety of short little videos, a reading of the 148th Psalm, a separate video to indicate some of the delights of the gifts of creation and wonder and thanksgiving. And yes, also moments of prayer and delight in who we are at Bells Hill Central Parish Church, delighting in who God has called us to be. Harvest has many faces, many shapes, many forms. It is my privilege as Minister of Word and Sacrament to simply invite you to light in our worship service this day. It is harvest. Amen. The reading today is Mark chapter 8, reading verses 1 to 8. Feeding the 4,000. In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered, and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples to him, and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days, and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way, and some of them have come a long way. And his disciples answered him, How can one feed these men with bread here in the desert? And he asked them, How many loaves have you? They said, Seven. And he commanded the crowd to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd. And they had a few small fish, and having blessed them, he commanded that these also should be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied, and they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full.
The Harvest Festival offers us many different invitations in terms of ways of giving thanks. Obviously, part of our prayers are thanks for food and for sustenance and for life. Thanks for the ways in which God has proved present in the year that has passed, no matter how challenging it has been. Ways in which God continues to be present as we move ever so gently into the future. The psalmist, when he wrote, didn't always have a full appreciation of how vast the universe was, but even in the 148th Psalm, there are many invitations and indicators of God's engaging and God's continued presence with us as human beings, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, as we observe the cycles of life, as we give thanks and praise to God for the gift of creation, and the gift of life itself for the ways in which we are invited to delight in the sheer wonder of being alive. The 148th Psalm. What a glorious psalm it is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his heavenly hosts. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and your waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in place forever and ever. He gave a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints of Israel, the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord, the vastness of creation, heavens above, stars that speak of his glory, majesty and power, the sense of an ever expanding universe from the smallest moment to the largest expanse of glory and power and praise of majesty and creativity. Such is the invitation for us to look up and beyond ourselves and see in all the splendor of the skies and the heavens indicators of God's extravagance, of God's glory, of God's majesty, of God's power, and simply get lost in a sense of loving adoration. But then also, even as we look out through a telescope into the wide open sky and the heavens above, let's also look down through a microscope at the very small, God's attention to detail, the tiniest of insects, of the reminder even in the vulnerability of the smallest of the small, God has his eye upon the sparrow, that God is not merely the God of glory and power and majesty and awe, but God is also the God who enters into our suffering, our struggle, our challenges, our questions. God is the God who hints within us that still small voice that responds within us by his spirit and says give thanks give thanks for fruit and for vegetable give thanks for delight give thanks for food give thanks for the sheer gift of family and friendship and yes as God is in the large and the great and the glorious as God is in the small and the attention to detail so God is also present in each and every one of us. And all the wonderful gifts that we have to live and to share in all the wonderful ways in which we mark the world a more colorful and gracious and glorious place simply by being who we are. This is Harvest Festival. It is an opportunity for us, obviously, to give thanks and praise to God for food and abundance for glories above, for glories below. But it's also an opportunity for us to give thanks and praise to God for the gift of our life, to offer who we are in these challenging and demanding times to each other, 
in moments, in gestures, in acts of kindness and goodness and generosity, in moments of paying attention to, of a smile, of a laugh, of a love. We are privileged to be those who are able to give thanks. Amen. Hello everybody. Thankfulness at BCPC by Rabbi Guy. I'm thankful for the strength we have to face our life each day. For the family and friends we help each other along the way. We really don't know hunger. We're very rarely cold. We have no generation gap. We're together young and old. So at this time, we should take some time to think of the world we know, where people are homeless in an uncaring world and they have no place to go. I'm thankful for the family of Belso Central Parish Church. The way we stick together, I appreciate so much. And as we face this winter time in an uncertain world today, we owe it to ourselves to be positive in every way. To be thankful for the things we have and thank the Lord and say how grateful we are for the strength we have on this our harvest day. I'm thankful for all my friends, my wing and cupcakes, and my clothes and sunshine, and I love you, bye. Hello everyone, I would just like to say that I'm really thankful and grateful for having my family uh, here and also my husband for everything that he does. Uh, and also having four lovely grandchildren and another wee one on the way for early next year which will be lovely. 
uh, but we really should be thankful for everything that we have because when you see the the deprived countries that have no food and water we really should be really thankful for everything that we have right. We are very thankful to all the people working hard, keeping us safe through all these scary times. Take care everyone, hope to see you all soon. I am thankful for my family. I am thankful for my friends. I am thankful for the things I love. Thank you never I am thankful for my health. I am thankful for my family who take good care of me. I am thankful to my three lovely granddaughters who keep me young. I am thankful for my family and friends being safe in lockdown and all the NHS and key workers keeping us safe. Hope to see you all soon at church. Lots of love, Ellie. I'm thankful for everything that God has given me. And for that reason, I would like to sing an Indonesian song of thank you, which is Terima Kasih. We're thankful for each other, we're thankful for Nikki's new job in South Lanarkshire and we're thankful for our good health and all our friends at Bells Hill Central. So, thank you. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices, who wondrous things hath done, in whom his will rejoices, who from our mother's arms have blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love, and still is ours today. Martin Rinkot wrote that hymn, people argue about when he wrote it, but one thing we do know, whenever he wrote it, he faced a lot of trials and struggles in his life. He was the pastor of a little Saxon village, Eilenburg by name, during the Thirty Years' War that stretched from 1618 to 1648. And in one of those years alone, it was hit not only by war, but by plague. And Martin Rinkart had to officiate at the funerals of up to 4,000 people, many of them in mass graves, an indicator of how difficult, trying, demanding, challenging life can be. Yet in the midst of that, he somehow found on behalf of his people a hymn that spoke of God's care, God's peace, God's offer of life, God's promise of life, not only here as we know it in the midst of all its struggle and pain and suffering, but also a life that speaks of God's love in the ways in which communities come together, share their food, share their lives, feast together, even in the most demanding of situations, exercise compassion. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices as we celebrate today the remarkable gift of harvest we look for moments to give thanks and praise to god for all god is doing in our midst and all that god will continue to do in jesus name all god's people said amen
Harvest Prayers We praise you, O God, for the gifts of the harvest. You are the creator of the world. Everything we see causes us to praise you. We praise you for our food, the crunch of an apple and the juice of an orange, the taste of meat and varieties of fish, the goodness of vegetables and the luxury of fruit, the sweetness of sugar and the sharpness of salt, for milk and tea and fresh water to quench your thirst. We praise you for the harvest of industry, the products of factory and mill, for clothes and cars, for tables and televisions, for iron and steel, plastic and petrol, and for the skill to fashion the materials you created on earth. This harvest day reminds us afresh that you love us and care for us. Call us again to share your tasks of caring for this world. Whisper anew that you created us in your image. Then we will unite to praise you for the harvest, to join you in partnership and offer you these gifts as a thanksgiving for everything you give us the whole year through. Thank you for being with us on this Harvest Sunday, where we have celebrated something of God's abundance and generosity, slightly different ways to which we would do it week in and week out, shorter little segments, inviting different people to share in prayers and moments and gestures of thanksgiving. Our closing blessing is a reminder of the sheer gift of the harvest. Once more, we have celebrated the harvest brought our gifts, sung our hymns, and remembered the Creator. Lord of the harvest, give us one more gift. Help us to remember this festival throughout the coming year, of ploughing, of sowing, of feeding, of reaping. Every time we eat a meal, remind us of your presence. Every time we drink, 
remind us of your blessings. Every time we see a need, give us the sense of sharing. Every time we enjoy your creation, fill us with thanks and praise, so that when we gather again next harvest time, we shall know that you have sustained us and we have lived and given ourselves for you. In Jesus' strong name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen.